My name is Dr. Yurif Haiken, and I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist at South Sacred Regional Health Center and Pace Cardiology Clinics. And I want to talk to you about ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia is a life-threatening condition that originates in the lower chambers of the heart. As you know, your heart has four chambers with normal electrical activation starting in the right upper chamber and activating the upper chambers and subsequently the lower chambers. Certain patients, however, are at risk for life-threatening arrhythmia coming from the bottom chambers of the heart. These patients may have a range of conditions. Some of the more benign include very frequent extra beats, which typically come from the upper portion or the outflow tract of the bottom chambers around either the aortic or the pulmonic valves. These are more of a nuisance. Most patients present with feeling skipped beats or irregular beats every so often. If these extra beats, however, become very frequent, the patients may come in with significant fatigue uh, and uh, shortness of breath, occasionally congestive heart failure. We have evidence that patients who have more than 10 to 15 percent of extra beats coming from the upper chambers of the heart compared to the total number of beats, these patients may be at risk for developing a cardiomyopathy or an abnormality of the heart muscle function and may feel unwell over time. The reason this occurs is the following. You can think about the lower chambers as a tube of toothpaste. With normal electrical activation, we start squeezing the toothpaste out at the back end of the tube, and the blood or the toothpaste, whichever the case may be, comes out of the opening of the tube. If, however, the extra beats or the compression of the tube comes right next to the outlet, a lot of the toothpaste, or in this case blood, goes back into the heart chamber instead of being ejected. As a result, the heart does all the work but gets very little efficiency, very little output for the work that it does. We do have some medications to address this problem. Some patients may respond to beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Unfortunately, the same medications, while working for some patients, do not work for others and may make you tired, may reduce your heart rate, may make you dizzy, and may have other side effects. As an alternative, we have a procedure called ablation, where catheters, thin wires with electrodes at the tips, are placed to the intravenous or the artery in the groin up in the heart. We create a three-dimensional model of the outflow tract and deliver energy to ablate or cauterize these areas causing these extra beats, either in the right lower chamber of the heart or the left lower chamber of the heart, and occasionally both chambers. The procedures typically take two to three hours. We typically discharge patients home the same day. Like any other invasive procedure, this procedure carries a small risk of bleeding or infection of the groin, small risk of causing a heart attack or a stroke, and small risk of bleeding around the heart. However, these risks are really quite, quite low using the technology we have right now. The success rate of the procedure in completely getting rid of the extra beats is in the ballpark of 80 to 90 percent in most patients. Ventricular tachycardia may present in a more dangerous form in patients with either dilated cardiomyopathy or patients with heart muscle dysfunction due to a heart attack or a number of heart attacks. These patients come in with a lot of scar tissue built up in typically the left lower chamber of the heart. These patients may also be helped with medication However, typically we have to use stronger medicines, such as sotolol or amiodarone in order to suppress the arrhythmia. These patients may also benefit from a device called a defibrillator uh, or an ICD, which is implanted on the chest with wires into the lower chambers. The defibrillator has all the functionality of a pacemaker, but it may also shock the heart with electricity if need be to save your life and I would look at it as life insurance policy. The defibrillator typically does not make you feel any better. As an alternative, we can offer you a procedure called ablation. With ablation, catheters, thin wires, are placed in the lower chambers of the heart, typically using the artery or the vein in the groin. Using sophisticated equipment, we can build three-dimensional virtual maps of the lower chambers of the heart 
including maps of the scar tissue, and cauterize short circuits, typically on the fringes of the scar tissue, although sometimes these may be present in the scar tissue as well. 70% of the time we can get rid of the arrhythmia altogether, 90% of the time we can render the patient free of either arrhythmia or they may remain, um, they may continue to have some arrhythmia but would no longer receive shocks from their defibrillator device, significantly improving their quality of life. These are procedures that take typically three to four hours. We typically keep most of the patients in hospital overnight for observation, but are able to discharge them home the following day. In a small group of patients, we may need to go to the outside of the heart to target the arrhythmia through a small incision and a catheter placed under the rib cage into the bag around the heart or the pericardium. These patients get a special drain placed in the pericardium overnight. This is typically taken out the following day, but the patients may spend an extra day or so in hospital as a result.